Hi, I'm Lana from AWS, and welcome to This Is My Architecture. Today, we're talking with Dan from Tapestry. Hi, Dan. Hi, how's it going? Uh, going great. Thank you so much for joining us today. And would you mind telling us a little bit about what Tapestry does? Yeah, of course. Um, Tapestry is a multi-brand fashion house based in New York, uh, and I'm with the Data Labs team. And so we're responsible for data science across all the brands. I would imagine it's a little bit different working with fashion brands uh, as, a, as, a, as an IT professional. So what are some differences that uh, translated into this architecture? Yeah, so we, uh, you know, when we got there, we were dealing with a lot of on-prem architecture, a lot of um, legacy systems, and so building an environment on top of that that interacts with it um, required some creativity. Uh, so we decided to go with a serverless um, architecture. Awesome. So I'm seeing some workloads running on this web server. What exactly are we doing here? Yeah, so this is an ECS cluster that runs uh, a, web, a, a web endpoint. Um, so a user will come to our site, and they're hitting a, a, an ECS environment that hosts our, our container, so this Docker, Dockerized um, application. Gotcha. And uh, I'm seeing that it actually has an Amplify framework running there. That's right. So uh, you know, we're, we're a smaller team, so we used uh, Amplify to help deploy application quickly. Um, and that allowed us to spin up AWS services very quickly. So uh, for example, authentication with Cognito, which we connect to our, our corporate single sign-on. And then we use Pinpoint for site analytics, so to track our users and what they're doing on our site. Gotcha. So you could actually reuse some of the Cognito user pools to get to production faster, right? Exactly. So the next application we deploy, we'll just leverage the same, the same framework, and we can stand it up very quickly. Awesome. I'm a big fan of API separation when you're scaling out um, architectural pieces. So mm -hmm. would you mind walking me through how are you using API Gateway and Lambda? Yeah. So let's say that a user comes to the site and they want to um, have a photo analyzed or an image of a product. Um, they'll input it into our, our front end, which will request for an API Gateway that, that kicks off a Lambda function to our data science environment. Um, the reason that we separated the two was we wanted to modularize the environment as much as we could. Uh, and so, for example, let's say we wanted to hit an Aurora database uh, down here in Lambda uh, or another on-prem database. Lambda allows us to do that um, you know, piecemeal. Gotcha. Um, and I'm seeing here that you're running uh, some modeling endpoints on mm -hmm. EC2, um, and you're using Lambda here to trigger some workflows. So uh, what made you decide to go with EC2 at this point? Yeah, so in the data science world, that's a GPU-optimized machine that's running a Docker container and a, a, a live production model. Um, and so, the, for example, this could be a Flask application that's receiving that input. In this case, let's say it's that image. Um, an S3 object URL hits that endpoint, and it, it's running it, its analytics and then returning that back to the user. Um, and how does S3 fit in into this workflow? Yeah, so in this case, we want uh, you know, all of our models to get smarter over time. So there's always a component of each Lambda that drops the request from the user in test three. So let's say it's an image that we've never seen before, never run through training. Uh, we've connected the S3 to our data science dev environment that the data science team can then ingest that and retrain the model and then deploy it back into production. Um, so the models are constantly learning based on the data that's coming from the users. That's awesome. So we have a CI CD component here for retraining models and deploying them back into your production modeling endpoints. Exactly. So those are Docker containers that are deployed in Beanstalk um, and then hit to that production environment. Awesome. And how does the user leverage all of this cool tech, this entire feedback loop? Yeah. So they simply type a URL into the browser. Um, so they don't know the difference. But the best part is we can do this all super quickly. Um, and they can access it from, from anywhere and mobile. Dan, thank you so much for joining me today. Thanks for having me. And thank you for watching. This is my architecture. Mm -hmm.